feel that strongly, that he is whipping people up against MPs? Absolutely, yes. I'm unequivocal about that, Kate. And it's quite clear from the abuse that's happening. Many people are quoting the Prime Minister. They're abusing in his name. And interestingly, yesterday, when I went into Parliament, a number of MPs, in fact, indeed, many Conservative MPs, came up to me and thanked me profusely for raising it in the House yesterday. They said it had to be said because they are frightened too. Now, as part of illustrating this, uh, you brought up Jo Cox, the terrible, tragic uh, murder of her. He's been criticised for bringing her into Brexit, but you did bring her in first. I raised the, the what happened to Jo because I think it's absolutely crucial that we recognise that words have consequences. Jo's death, Jo's tragic murder, did not happen in a vacuum. And the toxic, divisive atmosphere that's happening at the moment is, is so toxic that people are genuinely worried that there could be further episodes of violence. And the Prime Minister was grossly irresponsible this week to respond to an MP who was raising genuine concerns on behalf of lots of other MPs and not just Labour MPs to suggest it was humbug. It was deeply responsible and strongly suggests that he is indeed unfit for office. Paula, do you... We had Brendan Cox on the show yesterday and he said that he felt sick when he got the messages and he heard that Joe was being talked about mm. in Parliament by this. Uh, regardless of the argument and words that we used, do you regret bringing her memory into that debate and giving the Prime Minister a reason to talk about her again? Do you feel like you perhaps shouldn't have done that to illustrate your point there was another way you could have done it? No, I think obviously my thoughts go out to Brendan and, and the whole family. But I think it is important that we recognise, again, that words have consequences and we stand in that chamber under the shield of, of, of Joe. And it's absolutely crucial. We've seen potential attacks on other MPs. We've seen a real whipping... The, the Prime Minister, indeed, is whipping up a storm. His behaviour has been grossly irresponsible. And, indeed, I was approached yesterday by a number of his own ministers who said that they were absolutely horrified by his behaviour the, the other evening. So, um, unfortunately, like, like I say, I'd, we don't bring Joe up gratuitously. No. But I think, in context, it was very relevant indeed. Right. Well, let's put that to Ian Duncan Smith, who's sitting alongside us here. <clears> and <throat> what, what she's saying there is there were Conservative MPs, MPs on both sides of the debate, sort of, uh, sort of thanking her for bringing this up. And actually, what Boris Johnson was doing was irresponsible. And well, first of all, I get on very well with Paula when the, the, uh, the House of Commons is not on. And uh, she's a passionate person. And, uh, and I think she brings a, a great deal of that to the debates. But I think we need to get this into context. Uh, I think there were a number of things that went wrong in the course of that debate. First of all, I think it went on far too long because basically just people got worse and worse and worse as this went on. Uh, there was problems on all sides of the House uh, with respect to Paula and Jess Phillips and the other. Uh, as Maria Miller said yesterday, they were hurling abuse across the floor of the House. He was called a liar, a cheat a fascist. I could hear all this coming across from the other side. So when you're in the cockpit of the House of Commons, people's emotions then wind up and up. Mm. Uh, and uh, frankly, it's not a criticism of the Speaker, but my observation is we should have cut that short because it didn't. That's the first thing. The second thing I just want to say about the Joe Cox thing, I am in no doubt at all it should not have been, she should not have been raised. Uh, you know, it, it was hers was a terrible human tragedy. There are morons out there, nasty people, and uh, she's no longer with us because of somebody like that. There are many Conservatives whose badges also lie on there who died as a result of terrorist activity. I would not dream of bringing them up into that debate because I know it just inflames uh, the passions. So the first thing I think we need in those... Isn't that so what that Boris dial Johnson should have said then? Well, right? Because you've defended his, yeah. his reaction. Uh, or are you basically saying it was a human one? He was whipped up and misspoke. Look... Uh, he obviously is responsible for all that he says. Uh, I'm not Boris Johnson. But my main point is that everyone is attacking 
But you, but you do, but you do, you yeah, no, I, do I, have I, a view, I'm sure, about I whether do. he was right. I do, he, he was not. reacting, and if you put it in the wider context, what, what I think was wrong was when it was raised, the whole idea of what he was doing was set to a new level, which I thought was wrong. In other words, you know, calling the, the act of Parliament went through the other day a surrender act is not an incitement to violence. It is a description, an adjective, mm -hmm. about what it does. It surrenders powers to the European Union. I'm get was he right or wrong? In the to way, call it surrender. To act. say that the best thing that could be done well, was, was to, to serve Joe's honour her. Yeah, yeah, well, because if you look at it carefully, what is the root cause of this? And I can answer this question by doing this. The root cause of this anger right now, which is going on, and by the way, it's out there because I was knocking on doors the last three or four weeks uh, and I got it a lot. People saying, I'm fed up, I'm angry with Parliament, you haven't made a decision, you promised us, you didn't deliver. People feel like three and a half years ago they were told, whatever the outcome, we will deliver this. Now, if you go on denying that, which mm. is what Parliament has done, look, but I Ian, hated, I I, hated I the I think that you're... Bill. And we'll come on to that, but I think you do think he was wrong. No, no, I don't. I think you do, but I think you understand why he got himself into that position. The context of it is the best way to dial this down is for Parliament to recognise we have to deliver... Well, that's one okay. way to argue. And that look, will take what the about sting the wider point that words have consequences and words of they do. matter? Yes, because they do. there's been a lot of words used right from the beginning of this debate that have whipped people up. There's accusations from the Leave campaign that they said things and made promises that actually can't be delivered. There's accusations that the Remain side of things indulged in Project Fear, which whipped people up. Mm -hmm. And are we now seeing basically the result? of words being used willy-nilly in a place where we expect words to be used responsibly. I agree. But, you know, there are two sides to this point. Um, I recognise everyone's response to the words. I wasn't in there hurling abuse the other night because I've seen what happens when you let it go and I just found it unedifying. I left the chamber at one point, came back in again later on. I was in, I think, uh, when, uh, uh, when this was going on at, towards the end. Uh, the truth is, it is a cockpit of debate. Words, of course, matter. But when you sit in that place, when there is a genuine... Uh, one side is trying to target an individual and the other side is trying to lay the blame on the other, you then get this furor. All I'm saying now is going around blaming Boris Johnson for this is completely mad okay. because it, it, he is not responsible for what happened in the chamber that night. Everybody bears responsibility for yeah. what happened in that let's, chamber. Let, let's go... Even the speaker, to some degree, because, frankly, I think I would have switched that debate off he after could have an hour and a half. Uh, let's go back to Paula on that. Um, and the reality of this is, of course, Paula, is that we're still in the situation, we're still in this sort of Brexit deadlock, and we're still in a, in, in a, in a position whereby it doesn't feel like there's a way out and we can't see a way out. As Ian was saying, and I'm sure you'll admit, there was anger and there was words and there was insults being hurled on both mm. sides of the debate. How do we move forward, though? That's the most important thing. How do we go forward in a way that is much more sort of conciliatory between both sides so it becomes a discussion rather than a fight? Absolutely, Ben, and I completely accept that all of us as parliamentarians, including myself, we have to reflect and we have to introspect on our behaviour and our language because I had friends that were watching what happened in the Commons the other night and they said they were horrified at the, the atmosphere. It was toxic, it was like a zoo. People likened it to the Bullingdon Club. But I must say to Ian that I pity him for coming out today and fundamentally defending a man who responded to a female who was clearly concerned about threats, about abuse, and actually defending a man who responded to that, to those genuine fears, by saying humbug. I think, I'm, I'm sorry, I understand that Ian's very loyal, but I'm afraid I do believe that he is defending the indefensible. OK, but that, again, Paul, is something that happened the other day and we need to talk about moving forward. I mean, it is the problem for you that you can't, sure. get, but you can't get beyond what Boris Johnson has said there? No, absolutely. I, I look forward to uh, Boris apologising and I will, of course, accept that apology with good grace. I tend to agree with something David Gork said earlier this week in a broadcast interview, Ben. He said that, essentially, they should get all 650 of us, lock us in the chamber and not let us out until we've resolved Brexit, until we've reached 
uh, a conclusion and clearly compromise is going to be the order of the day. I would never, ever advocate a no-deal Brexit. I've always been mm -hmm. unequivocal about that. But equally, I personally do not believe that revoking Article 50 is democratic. Therefore, compromise has to be achieved somehow. Ian, uh, will Boris Johnson apologise? He hasn't so far. Well, I don't think he thinks that he has any reason to, and I, I personally think that the whole of the House of Commons should just take a pace back and say, that debate happened, none of us are particularly proud of what happened. Uh, if we keep screaming at each other, saying, you were wrong, you were right, you were apologising, no, you weren't, we're going to end up <clears throat> like a, a primary school without a teacher. The truth is, we have to recognise that the responsibility we hold now is to deal with the cause of this. Mm -hmm. The cause, and I think we might agree about this, is that we have to settle this issue. We cannot go on extending. We cannot keep telling no. people, you don't matter, we are going okay. to do what we I want. I think that is exactly right. what well, everybody wants. On the wants. hope of agreement is as good a place as any to leave it.